Well, welcome. Uh, this morning I've been doing a back dawn at survey, so I got up at half past two in the morning, got here shortly after three, and uh, set up with my bat detector to try and detect bats outside this local church that I've been associated with. Unfortunately this morning it was too dark to actually do any filming, so I've had to tell you now, uh, with a bit more light, what I found. The first bat that came over was very quiet. It wasn't really detected on my bat detector, and I think that was probably a brown long-eared bat. They have very large ears, and if I was a brown long-eared bat, my ear would be up here and folded down, it would come down to my knee. And because it was so quiet on the back detector, um, they don't need to um, shout very loudly, so um, there's no noise on the back detector. The second bat I uh, discovered was a pipistrel bat. Now, there are two sorts of pipistrel bats. A soprano pipistrel bat, which has quite a high voice, and the common pipistrel bat that has a slightly deeper voice. And with the help of my bat detector, I was able to work out that it was a common pipistrel bat. Then lastly, and uh, while I come here to the church, quite an uncommon bat flew over, a serotine bat. And they're quite large, they're the Britain's second largest bat, and have quite a deep voice. And so on the bat detector, it's quite a low frequency, um, it's the loudest pitch you hear and uh, their calls are um, irregular smack-like sounds uh, which are quite distinguishable. So I'm outside this church because today, after lockdown, this is the first day in which the church is going to be opened up and I know this is a, a good bat roost church and hopefully there'll be lots of evidence uh, from the droppings of bats where they're roosting. So an ideal time for me to come and have a look and look around the church and find the uh, roost sites that the bats are using. And you're able to uh, work out which species of bat are using which roost sites because of the different shapes of the uh, droppings they make. So since mid-March the church has been in lockdown. No one has gone in the church and notice has been put up on the church door to explain this. You can see big locks on the door. But today we're going to go into the church for the first time in about 12 weeks. But actually the door itself is quite interesting. Bats use this door to get, enter into the church. And if we look quite closely, we can see this little dropping here, which is quite a long and quite spiral shape dropping. And this is the dropping probably of a brown long-eared bat. Natura's bats also make a similar dropping uh, like that. Um, but also on the church door, there are far smaller droppings, which may be difficult to see, but you can see like a little dropping there and dropping there. And actually, if you look up towards the door, all the droppings are quite fan-shaped until you get right to the very top, where you can see a big crack. And actually, if you look quite closely, you can see a slightly different colour to the wood. And this is where the bats come. They congregate up towards the top of the church door and they land on top of the church door then crawl over between the gap and into the church. The church door is now open and uh, starting to step inside the church but interestingly if we look down here right on the floor by the church there's a whole pile of droppings here and again we've got some of our very long twisty droppings of brown long ear interspersed with some of the pipistrel droppings as well. And if we look at the back of the church door, where the bats go out of the church, you can see lots of sort of white marks on the door that show up really clearly on the black up to the top of the door, and those are little urine stains of the bats. And look how stained the door is. The bats have been using this church, well, decades, maybe hundreds of years, going over that little crack. And big droppings there on the ledge of the door. As we've come into the church, the uh, church warden and volunteers have put tarpaulings um, underneath where the big roosts are. And if we look down here, on this tarpauling, you can see there are probably thousands and thousands of bat droppings. And these droppings are slightly bigger than the ones we saw on the door. They're slightly different and these droppings are the droppings of a serotine bat and they're concentrated underneath the roost and the roost of the serotine bat 
will be right up in those rafters there, probably in between one of those joints we see. There will be a gap and that's where the bats will be going in and roosting there at the moment. So as we speak there are probably some mums up there forming a maternity roost. And here we come to a patch where we've got two roosts quite close together. We've got one pile of droppings on this bit of tarpaulin here and another pile here. And interestingly enough, if you ever come into a church and want to know if you've got a bat dropping, if you pick up a dropping and it will easily crumble between your fingers to a fine powder and dust. And if you look in the light, sometimes a bat dropping will glint. And that's the uh, wings of the insects they're eating made of carotene. And the carotene gives the dropping just a slight uh, glint and tinkle to it. And if we look on the lectern here, we can actually see three different sorts of droppings. That dropping there is a long spirally dropping and probably a brown long eared dropping. We have the larger droppings here of the serotene and also much smaller droppings of the pipistrel bat there. One of the great things of coming into the church and it being undisturbed for so long is to be able to see the concentration of droppings. So around here we've got a large concentration of droppings all around the pulpit and some of them, or an awful lot of them, seem to be long and twisted. And there are their brown long eared droppings and they're mostly concentrated around here although we do have some serotine droppings. But if you look above the pulpit again we have some fantastic bat roost potential in those beams right next to the uh, brickwork. And I'm sure there must be a little maternity roost going on up there as well. Fantastic. And can I introduce John Meehan, who's the uh, treasurer for the church, to talk a little about, about being in a church with uh, such a large concentration of bats. Hi. Uh, the difficulty we have with um, humans and bats trying to live together is that um, bats leave their droppings, we have to clean up after them. Uh, we realise, you know, they're created creatures in the same way that we are, but we do find it difficult sometimes to live with them, particularly when we find bat droppings on the floor that maybe children can pick up. Um, and uh, we have to be very thorough with our cleaning both before and after the service. Um, that's, that's being very negative, but um, on the whole we do realise we need to live with them. And lastly, our final concentration of the serotene roost. So now, if we look around the church, we have four large concentrations of serotene droppings. So indicating at least four large serotene roosts within this church. This big expanse of church with the fantastic bat roost potential in the eaves around the church. For me, this is a glorious church for bats.